You ever bite off more than you can chew? Well, that would be this box. This is the Mini DSP Nano AVR HD. And it sits here on my desk amongst all these other pieces of equipment and it is more important than any of them. Let me tell you what this does. You ever see the Hacker Man GIF? Well, this basically lets you edit the source code of your movie audio, of any audio. This laptop on this side is um, representing our source. It is simply just playing HDMI, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is still on. So that's outputting. This outputs into here. This has on the back of it, I'll turn it around if I don't unplug everything. Two HDMI inputs, one HDMI output, an ethernet port to connect to a controller, USB 2 going to this silver laptop and power. That's it. So essentially, what the Mini DSP Nano AVR does is it steals the audio that's coming out of your source, lets you operate on it like Hacker Man, and then gives it out to your surround sound processor or surround receiver. It doesn't have to be this. It could be any surround receiver. It could be anything, actually, that takes an HDMI input. And if I unpause that, you can see every level of every channel. Front left, front right, subwoofer, center, surround left, surround right, rear or back left, back right. And if you know anything about mini DSPs, which you should if I'm watching this channel, you know that, well, okay, Zios, now I have access to eight channels. Uh, so I can, what, leveling? What, EQing? What, what, crossovers? Compressant? Compression? More than that. Even more than that. Even fucking more than that. Even, even fucking more than that. Because <laughs> here's the routing uh, picture, if you can tell what that is. I had this hooked up in my living room. F starting off, this thing is amazing when it's working. Uh, it's not in my living room anymore because it just stopped working. I put it in here, I put it in this setup, it's working. Tomorrow it might not be working, and it's not... I think it's mostly because of my um, Tascam receiver being a little bit uh, like it's an old drunkard. I think this this setup here is a little more stable because it's a little simpler. But what I can basically do is anything the fuck I want. I was able to take the center channel, which is where all the vocals come from from a movie, and literally just click on where see center out. Here's center out. Here's center in. We want to make the center out there. That one. What's that one? That one's surround back right. So the surround back right channel would just play vocals that people would be talking out of it. Yeah, but that's stupid. What else can you do? Well, we can right click this and adjust the levels of every individual channel. We could shut things off, turn things on. We could share things. How's this? Because it has four configurations you could you can load. Sorry, it's like 4 a.m. and I'm I'm working off candy right now. There's four configurations you can load, which you can do either with the single button. This is the first mini DSP that actually has, I would call an interface in the front of it, where you get to pick presets by pressing this button or switching between input one or two by holding this button down. So that's, that's, that's fantastic. And you could have it set so that it's like, all right, if I have a 5.1 movie, normal. Or, or what if I have a 7.1 movie? Oh, but I want the lower the channels back because they really bother me. So what if I have another 5.1 movie, but I really want to expand it out to use all seven channels? You can just copy the rear channels, the side channels, and put them to the back channels. And then you could add delay because you can add 80 milliseconds of delay through a mini DSP. And then you could lower them down a little bit. I was doing something in my living room when it was working I have to keep saying when it was working, where I took the front channels left and right, took those sources, and I moved them to the side, 
also, so I played in both places. And then I made it inverted phase, lowered it, and delayed it slightly. And the sound of it, like, I was just fucking with it. And then once you're done with placement of what sounds you want where, and there's, there's a special, there's another, there's LFE in here, and at the bottom there's LFE management. Because if we go to LFE management, you see that chart, which shows you all the channels, front, left, front, right, set, LFE, center, surround, left, surround, right, back. And you can run a low pass filter. And this, you can actually yank out the things that are going to your 0.1 sub. Manually, per channel, and adjust levels per channel and send it out through HDMI to the receiver. And all you gotta do to your receiver or your processor is tell it to do nothing. Don't, don't do distances, don't do leveling, do, do nothing. Do nothing. Just decode the surround I'm giving you from multi-channel PCM and feed it to the speakers. And then act as my volume knob. I mean, you could act as a volume knob here. There's, there's some stuff we gotta talk about. This is, my brain hurts a little bit and you're gonna have to follow me on this. This could be the second coming of Christ for any home theater enthusiast if it works properly. Because you can do room measurements manually with Roo and a microphone and then go into the channel, config one, let's go to the outputs, um, front left, parametric EQ, 10 band parametric EQ. You can go to advanced, you can load in the actual biquad numbers and just copy paste it in there and it'll just, your correction line will be there. You, you've corrected your front, cha your front channel. If this is sounding interesting to you, let me show you this. So here it is, $250 for the Nano HD. You spend a little more, get the, for 385, you get the Nano H, Nano AVR HDA, which the back of it looks like that. It's got eight analog outputs. So what does that mean? So that means it's everything I'm showing you here. Plus, you don't need a surround sound processor to get the signals. It'll literally hand you eight analog outputs. So that would replace a surround receiver with pre-outs or it would replace a processor like, like the fucking, this is the Emotiva MC700. That would literally replace it and just give you full access to all this. You'd only have two HDMI inputs and you wouldn't have a display that shows you volume. You would be able to control the volume via the uh, infrared, which hold on, let me see what the actual infrared lets you program on this. You can do master mute, volume up, volume down, HDMI source between one and two, config increase, config decrease, then you could pick every four config. So you can just bounce up and down through them. Can I hit X on that? Yes, I can. Again, it's a lot to chew on. And then if you wanted to go up even more, if you wanted to have a little more money to spend, the Nano AVR DL for Dirac Live. Dirac Live is a room correction tech and it's expensive to license it. So essentially this exact same unit, no analog outputs, but with a Dirac Live that you can, Nano AVR platforms are unfortunately now out of stock due to IC shortage. Please stay tuned for an update. No! Is that on all of them? Fuck! As of November 2019, oh God, why do I decide to do these videos like seven months after I get a unit? I've had it for a long time. Do you want to know the crux of the problem? The problem crux? The cruxy problem? Because none of this fucking matters. Because this doesn't support 4K. Why are we even talking about it? There's a way around it. But until Mini DSP decide to update this so that it can pass through 4K, my initial idea was, computer was there, this surround processor was here, Nano... D D AVR was going to go in between and let me config and calibrate these fucking giant speakers and it would have been great. It would have been great. Doesn't do 4K. I went to the forums. I looked up. People were talking. Hey, why, how do we get around it? This little white box 
which cost me $80 and is only available on Newegg.com. I can't even tell what that is. What what fucking font is that? X Z X O L O Y Zolly space? Is it written in English somewhere? Anyway, this is an HDMI audio extractor, and you can find these everywhere, but not this type. This is a 4K HDMI audio matrix that outputs via HDMI. So you put in your sources, you put, you have an out for your television, then you have another out, and I've never seen this, and if you could find me one, tell me, but it's an audio only HDMI output, which means you would have to never have your video signal touch your surround processor or surround sound receiver. It would go source into this, this out to your television, and then this out to your surround processor. No, this out to this, then the surround processor. So this would just literally, because most of them have just fiber optic output, which is two channel, which means you're gonna have the left and right. So the fact that I'm reviewing it, even now, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's out of stock, it could be the greatest fucking thing on earth. Doesn't do 4K, doesn't do 4K. And you know what, if you look on the webpage, which I'm linked in the description, nowhere on it does it say only 1080p supported or 4K not supported, or 4K is supported. No, doesn't say it, doesn't say it. So this is me like ranting and hating on it a little bit, a little bit of hate. I don't know where this wallpaper is. If you're gonna ask me for it, it's fuck, that's what you got to, she's got too much, she's eating too much. So interesting little concept now, because now that I'm using uh, headphones, because obviously I don't have it set up in my living room with speakers and, I could have spent three days setting this up to film this, but I'm just yelling about what is what it can do and what it won't do, and then we're going to move on. We all have to get our, our lives moving forward. Interesting little thing, though. If you were to play a game, like like a first-person shooter, and you know how they've got like, like all those companies with their, oh, my gaming headset has surround mixing. Let me show you surround mixing. Because you could literally set this on the output of your com gaming computer. Your game is set to surround sound. It gets all the signals. You could boost any frequencies you want on any channel you want with no delay. You could take the subwoofer track, drop that, lower the bass on everything, take the rear channels, crank them up. Then you just need to plug it into a surround receiver with a headphone out like this, and you 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 could cheat basically. It's basically could be game cheating. I could probably sell more of these if I go at that aspect. The way to cheat at games is to literally take the surround sound, manually fuck with it. Like right now I have the, the back channels plus twelve decibels. So if I put this on, I set that volume and I have I hear the crowd screaming behind Freddie Mercury. And I've actually taken the center and I've lowered it a little bit. I want to hear more of them. I could just go down here and I could mute the center. Now nothing happening on screen is happening in my headphones. It's just crowd noises. Then I could invert one of the channels. Just, whoa, my head just exploded. Just killed a man. Put a gun against his head, eat a burger, she's gonna be dead. Um, this is extremely powerful. And it could be, like, my living room currently is only 1080p. That's, my receiver doesn't even support 4K. My my poor baby task cam, which is like six years old. Six or seven years old. So, this is perfect for that. But it, here's what would happen. I'd go to bed at the end of the night, shut off everything. Turn on everything, no sound. Sometimes, just sound out of the front channels, no rear channels. Huh. Shut everything back off, turn it on, still didn't work. I'd have to just disconnect this, plug it back in the old fashioned way. Then I'd have to plug it back in, trust again, oh, it works fine. It's working fine, it's working fine right now. This is working fine. I don't know, I spent days 
trying to assess what the fuck was going wrong. And I don't know if it was my computer. Like, at one point, I had this plugged in. I had this plugged into this computer, which is being shown on the screen. And if I go down here, it shows the MC700. It shows that this is the source. It doesn't even see this. It doesn't even see it. But once on my home theater PC in the other room, the, the my main living room, it saw this as a sound device. And I named it as such. And it worked fine. And then it stopped seeing that. And it stopped working fine. And then it saw that. And it started working fine. I don't understand the... Pro it has thick problems. When it doesn't have a problem, it is the tweakiest thing you've ever... I was dealing with my living room with the base management. I was pushing, I was, it was a wonderful thing because I was sitting in my listening position, video playing. And I never, I was using, I think my biggest problem in the living room was I was trying to edit the configuration of this from the computer I was playing the source. So you have to, oh, that's another thing. You have to, have to. And this should have been at the beginning of this video, and I apologize. Set it to a multi-channel PCM output. You can't just run DTS into this, or, or Dolby, and have it decode. This is basically, this won't work on anything you can't have the decoding happen on the unit. I haven't even played with Blu-ray players in so long, I don't even know if that's even a thing. Remember back in the day... On like DVD players, you could set it to PCM output and it would set up multiple things. But this won't decode DTS or Dolby. So basically, you have to have something like a home theater PC and Media Player Classic and go into the filter sets and then disable any sort of pass through. And it has to be all, this is all being decoded. Every channel is being ripped apart on the computer and all eight channels are being sent via fucking. HDMI to this so they can see it so that it pops up on here and I could edit every single one of them and then it gets put back into the HDMI and gets sent to this and from here the video is just passed onto the monitor. Um, I want to be able to wholeheartedly just recommend this. Just I think this could change home theater as we know it more than anything because it's so simple hdmi in hdmi out fuck with everything in between speaking of hdmi um you see this 50 foot cable i want to give a shout out to the company who sent this to me for an unboxing it's fiber optic it's a fiber optic did you know that that existed did you know a fiber optic hdmi existed what's the else are you smoking the ganj again no li literally the, the head of this unit, which is silver and down there, encodes the video signal into a fiber optic to send it via light. I think they have a 75 foot length as well. And then parallel with it is copper that will then power the decoding unit on the other end of it. And then the audio return channel goes through the same copper back to this end. So it acts as a normal HDMI cable, but you squeeze it and it's like a tube because it's it's a fiber optic cable with, with copper side. It's so fucking, and it's 4K compatible. And it's 50 feet and it just works, works fine. It removes all noise. Any, any digital noise you could ever have in a cable, that's gone. Because it's just, it stops being copper co uh, digital here. And at the back of the monitor gets turned back. It works great, it fucking works great. Just have to give a plug to that $90. It's a $90 50 foot cable but it at least works. Like it does what it says. I didn't even know fiber optic HDMI was a thing. Um, back to Freddy and Freddy Mercury. <sighs> Such a good movie. I've just been fucking with it. Centers down 11. You could do parametric EQs. You could do crossovers. You could adjust anything you want. I love how I'm moving this mouse, which is her. This mouse, which is Freddy. And then this touchpad, which is the actual controller. I would not recommend, if you're gonna try to buy one of these, like I'm, I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface of what's possible. I'm just a little bit upset about how fucky it was. But 
the shit you can do once you can access all eight channels of the HDMI audio spectrum and just tweak it. And you could set the channel mode here. So you could set it to stereo. If we unmute that. Now this now says two channel. I'm literally restricting this signal. So now this processor isn't even processing surround sound anymore. It's just two channel. It's just two channel. If I put this back on my head, hold on, wait. You know, I still have full control over the entire mix, but it's all just my, it's now just squeezing it down to stereo. You can do 4.0, 4 5.1 or 7.1. 7.1 is obviously what this can handle. Oh my god, it's so... Uh... Uh, 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 god. Alright. Back to pausing that. Look, I just need to get this review out. I bought this thing, I said I'd review it, this is the review. It's not, I'm not showing it at its full maximum capacity. I'm complaining that it can't do 4K, sometimes fucks up, S sometimes you, the uh, f infrared doesn't work to switch between the configs, although I don't think I've set this one up to do it, because I have another mini DSP of living room, but I don't want to get them confused, although you could use any button. This, this could be this, this could be it, this could be everything. The one with the analog outputs is interesting. Like, you could literally buy, like, a bunch of little fucking topping PA3s and have, like, this cute little fully fully metastasized little thing that just powers speakers in a surround sound. You'd only need three amps because the other two channels are... Well, no, you'd need four amps because the center channel needs an amp. But the subwoofer doesn't need an amp. It's a lot to chew. Get it? That's why I picked that. And it's late. Like, how late? 4.24 in the morning? That's fine. I'm fine. If you're thinking about buying one of these, go to the forums first. Go to the Mini DSP forums and read. Read about it. Because obviously there's, now they're out of stock, but you have a chance. The Dirac Live, you still need to do Dirac Live things separately. And I'm all about room correction. You can do it on this manually though. You can get Roo and a laptop and record every speaker and get your numbers and calculate out what you need to fix and go in here and literally manually load, copy paste, copy paste in every channel. I'm probably, if this thing worked in my living room, I was gonna room correct my entire living room and I haven't done that. Um, equalizing your home theater system with Nano AVR and UMK1. So here's an entire write up of how you do that with the mini DSP. Showing you where the cutoffs go, how to link the frequency enablers, how to read your graphs, what to set as a target rise. There's just so much stuff. This is real picky shit, real picky shit. I've gotten to the point now where I'm like, oh God, please baby, complicate my life a little harder. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got it to work on this desk without too much hassle. I'm gonna try it again in my living room. Zeos, why don't you just use this thing in your living room? Because I like my Tascams for its options better. Th this, as you've seen the review of this, has some fucky going on. But if this combo worked, and I was willing to get amplifiers from my rear channels, which I currently don't need them, I have front channels covered, subwoofers are covered, I don't have a center channel, so that doesn't need that extra weird monoblock. It's doable. My living room is could be easily switched over to running off of this pair. But I'm not I'm not I'm not ready for that. If you if you have one of these, by the way, tell me how you've got it set up. Tell me what you've done with it. Because I could have it switch between the four configs. I could have a config for late night movie watching. Where it just every channel has the equalizer, just uh Remove the low end. Just fucking dump it. Shut off the sub. Shut off the sub. Raise the center channel so I could hear vocals. 
and just give me like very very basic you can do that you can you can home build whatever surround sound mode you like you could do like a crazy concert mode like I was doing where I, I copied the left and right channel to the side channels. Then you can copy those channels again to the rear channels and have it so that when it's sound happens, it goes past you like this. Ah. 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 All right. I'm, I'm done. I have to stop and, and lay down because it's five in the morning and I wanted to do things today. Um... Yeah, this thing could be great. Could be great. It's expensive. 250 is fine. I bought the two. I bought the entry level. I didn't get one with the analog outputs, mostly because I would be concerned that the analog, the DAC converters in there would not be high enough quality. I'd rather keep it digital. Just fuck with it digitally. We're fucking with it digitally, which there's no loss. And then the DRX Live one removes the option to have the analogs. And it costs an extra $200. That's a, that's a, that's some cash, bro. 200 or 300 actually. Hold on. Wait. We have the DRX Live is 550 and this is 250 350 450 That's 300 fucking dollars. Fuck. Fuck. $300? Is it worth it? Is DRX Live worth $300? It's... I don't know. Look, check out Hi-Fi Guides. I'm gonna make an entire section. Now this is me doing my fever dream stuff at four, five in the morning. Entire section dedicated to room correction, uh, room correction devices, uh, sound dampening. We're gonna, I'm gonna make sure we have a section there where people can talk about how they've either corrected digitally or corrected physically with panels. I want that discussion because that's important. I'd rather see people talking about how they took a pillow and stapled it to the fucking wall than spending, oh, $180 on AudioQuest cables. Don't do that. I guarantee you that stapled pillow will do way more good than any cable upgrade you could ever fucking accomplish. So, this is my jam. This is my Jim Jams. He's my Jim Jam. This is my Jim Jam. That girl's eating my Jim Jams. I'm done. Um, Hi-Fi Guides, check it out. $2 patrons see a couple of these videos early and get every wallpaper. $5 patrons get every wallpaper. See these videos, every video, a week early. And can participate in the yard sale. If this didn't work, if this stopped working on all my systems that it could work for someone else, I'd put it in the yard sale. There's other things that are going to end up in the yard sale. First of the 10th of every month. I ship free domestically. Uh, international uh, pays half shipping. Random bids, everything starts at zero. There's all sorts of interesting stuff that is on that. Uh, you can also ask me any question you want for the $5 patrons. However, you are leaving me a message on Patreon, and I only checked it about twice a week, because there's a lot of them, and I just don't have the head around it. However, the $10 patrons, those are the people who are on my phone, because they are the behind-the-scenes, super-secret Telegram chat, and they talk with each other. There's 200 people in it right now, and if they need me, they at Zeos Pantera, and I'm there. And I answer any questions they want. Oh, how big is the tube? Well, take a picture of the back of your thing. Boom, boom. I want to see your cat's butthole. No one's asked for that specifically, but I've shared it because, well, she's a proud little girl. Um, we done? We done? I'm done. Freddy's done. We're gonna we're gonna live aid some more, and then I'm gonna go to bed. Right, 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 left.